Have you ever wanted to have a threesome with Genghis Khan and Mother Teresa? Oh, good lord, no. Why? Why would you say this? Or maybe you'd rather grab someone by the throat, squeezing so tightly you can slowly watch the life drain from their face in the desperate hope that it might finally make you feel something again. Holy sh**. Or perhaps you'd just rather play a round of golf with Bill Murray. Now you're talking. These are a few of the possibilities that fully immersive virtual reality has in store for us. Oh my god, why? The Genghis Khan thing, why? Virtual reality is an amazing concept that has been around for decades, though the reality has always fallen far short of our imaginations. The current VR technology that is widely available commercially is largely just a headset that puts a screen in front of your face while blocking out the rest of the world. It may be immersive to the user, but it still has its limits. You can't actually feel anything that you're doing, and many still rely on handheld controls to run you from walking into furniture or traffic if you're insane enough to do it outside near a street. In, in which case you should not be allowed this technology. Media has presented VR in a lot of different ways, but these are not all equally possible. So what will both the future and the distant future of fully immersive VR look like? Come on, Holodex! This is the episode about Holotex. Let's go. The Nerve Gear. The most popular notion of how VR will work in the future is something like the Nerve Gear from Sword Art Online. The Nerve Gear is a headset that covers the head and the face, and it's able to both read the electrical signals in a person's brain and send them sensory information, building an entire digital world that they can interact with. And because the user will move in VR by having their brain command their body to move, a signal which is interpreted by the Nerve Gear to control their character, the device also has to paralyze their body, which is, uh, somewhat terrified. This all seems pretty simple. Yeah, simple but terrifying. So Fiction has given us an outline of exactly what needs to be done, and all we need to do is follow that blueprint. Easy. It worked out for tons of other sci-fi gadgets, so why not for the Nerve Gear? Well, it turns out there's a number of problems with this. It is true that all we need to do is build a device that can do these things, but that doesn't mean we have any idea how to build that device. It'd be like, <laughs> Science fiction has sold us transporters. Come on, scientists, you lazy fucks. Where is it? We don't even know where to start. Furthermore, we aren't really trying to either. There has already been some success with controlling computers by utilizing electroencephalograms or EEGs, but the success is extremely limited. That's not to say it isn't a promising field and there isn't a lot more work to be done, but currently what we can accomplish with an EEG is uh, somewhat underwhelming compared to the expectation. They can scan your brain for electrical signals and through a lot of practice, a person can control one thing on a computer. It's a powerful tool for people suffering from paralysis or or other afflictions, but the technology is hardly efficient for granting a full range of human and potentially superhuman motion and abilities to a video game character. We're sorry. However, there is actually an even bigger problem than this. EEGs are a one-way form of communication. No matter how advanced our understanding of the brain becomes and how sophisticated the control provided by an EEG will be, it is still solely a form of input. There is no way for a headset like this to provide sensory information to the brain. As a matter of fact, there's only two ways we know of to provide any sensory information to the brain. And obviously the first is to actually experience the world around you. Well, touching grass, they go outside. Oh, Oh my god, look, trees! The second is by connecting computer chips directly to your brain or at least parts of your nervous system. This would be required if you needed to somehow induce paralysis in the user as there's no external electric or magnetic signal that we can use to paralyze a person. Now our old friends on this channel, Elon Musk is already trying to make this a reality with his Neuralink chip, a device that would be implanted into the brain and allow it to control a computer, though after six years it has yet to be used in a human trial. Come on Elon! Get your shit together, you lazy fuck! However, the Neuralink chip, Nerve Gear, and many other notions of future technology are all based on a bit of a faulty premise that our brain is a computer. At first blush, that makes sense. They both store data, they both receive input and produce output, and they are both controlled by electrical signals. Unfortunately, our brains aren't just running a string of Visual Basic or Seashell Command. Ultimately, we have no idea what the f*** is going on up here. It's not necessarily unreasonable to compare the human brain to a computer based on the apparent physical mechanics
aspects of it, but you would need to compare it to a computer built by an alien race that is thousands, if not millions of years more advanced than humans. We can sort of see what it's up to, but the main thing we know about how the brain works is how little we know about how the brain works. Currently, the best technology we have for bionic eyes only produces flashes of light in vague shapes. To suddenly improve from that to making someone see an entire world rendered in high resolution while bypassing the optic nerve entirely would be really challenging. There are a lot of different estimates for when nerve gear technology would be possible, ranging from the optimistic 50 to 60 years to the more pessimistic, well, f never. Realistically, the latter's actually far more likely. This sort of VR technology isn't being seriously pursued because it is the least viable of all the options. Even if we somehow figured it all out, who's gonna buy it? It's quite likely that the only way this would be possible is to interface directly with your brain, which means brain surgery. Aside from any legal or ethical issues, there's also the matter of cost. Brain surgery? <laughs> It's expensive. Look, you're looking at a six-figure bill for the surgery before even purchasing any of the actual technology, which is also going to be really, really expensive. Fortunately, there's a more realistic option for fully immersive VR. The Holodeck. Yes! But I bet you thought on this channel we'd never be telling you that holodecks are the more realistic option. But most holograms you're familiar with, like Tupac performing at Coachella, are very literally smoke and mirrors. They are normally 2D images projected onto a curved surface to give the illusion of a three-dimensional object. They may even be a 2D image projected onto an actual 3D structure to make it look like something that it isn't. Compared to a full-on holodeck, these are... Well, just pretty lame. However, this technology is rapidly advancing. In late 2021, Lightfield Labs showcased the world's first true high-resolution 3D hologram. They created an extremely realistic hologram out of solid light that seems to exist in 3D space. You can walk around it to view it in 360 degrees. It does not require the user to wear special glasses or any other equipment, and the holograms have such high resolution that you can even look at it under a magnifying glass to see it in more detail. The only issue is, being a solid light projection, your hand would go right through it. Still, as a proof of concept, they have shown that creating these images is possible. Possibly most interestingly, in a demonstration, a person put a hand through the hologram and it didn't disrupt the image at all, meaning someone could walk around and interact with a virtual world without all of the holograms around them constantly becoming distorted like we see in the movies. The chameleon shown in the demonstration was created by a single one of their panels, but the hologram could just as easily be scaled up by using more and more panels. As for making these holograms tactile, scientists are working on that as well. And there are a few ways that this is being experimented with. One is using jets of air to create resistance and simulate the sensation that something is really there. Another method is utilizing sound waves to produce the same effect. Admittedly, these are very similar, as sound is just a change in air pressure, but they are still meaningfully different methods of manipulating the air to create the sensations of touch. The final way currently being experimented with is utilizing the light itself. Researchers across four Japanese universities have created what they call fairy lights. These tiny holograms are created by ionizing particles in the air with a laser. Not only can you feel the holograms when you touch them, but they can register your touch, thus making them interactive. The reason this works is also the reason it's not nearly as scalable as the solid light images. Fairy lights are actually superheated plasma, and the sensation of touch you feel is really just your tissue being destroyed. Lovely. However, the lasers shut off after 1 60th of a second, and the researchers believe that there's no real risk of injury, but these were also extremely small holograms. Trying to build an entire interactive room out of superheated plasma is probably not going to be a brilliant idea, but it's still early days. If nothing else, they have shown that light-based holograms can create a sense of touch, even if it means destroying your skin. Nice. They've also shown that by using rapidly pulsating lasers, they can also be interactive and register that they have been touched. Again, while destroying your skin. In terms of building a full-on holodeck, we're still a long ways off. However, this technology is much more promising than, well, invasive brain surgery and the build that comes with it. Building a room that can be programmed to create a variety of different completely three-dimensional worlds and run various simulations within these worlds is absolutely attainable. It's not unreasonable to think that you could even touch and interact with some of these objects as well, though we're much less hopeful they'll advance to the point where you could sit on a hologram of a chair. But even with the their limitations, this would still be pretty amazing. Treadmills and Tesla suits. 
So, those are the options for the distant future. But what if we want immersive VR now instead of years after we're already dead? <laughs> Which is what I want, come on! <laughs> Fortunately, there are major advancements being made to virtual reality to elevate your level of immersion into fantasy and out of the dark, bleak existence that you call your life. Prices on VR headsets have been coming down to the point that they're roughly equivalent to any other new gaming console. Those who use them seem to generally like them, even if the amount of games available is extremely limited. I indeed have one of these. I got one of those Oculus 2s. It is incredible! However, this is still just a visual display covering your face while you wander around your house bumping into chairs and looking a bit foolish to everyone else yes indeed i have punched the wall <laughs> Bang! other than sight and sound your senses also aren't being engaged by the virtual world in any way but what if we were to tell you that there were solutions to all of these problems a freer range of motion could be granted by utilizing an omnidirectional treadmill that will allow you to walk or run comfortably without ever leaving a small space for smell there are actually vr headsets that use scent cartridges to release smell and can simulate an incredible array of different scents recreating a sense of touch though is the most impressive and important new technology and also the most expensive. The Tesla suit, no relation to Elon Musk, is what's known as a haptic suit. The purpose of a haptic suit is twofold. First, it acts like a mocap suit that things act as wear, so their physical motions can be rendered into 3D. More importantly, it has 68 haptic points that can simulate various sensations throughout the body. Least important and least impressive is replicating the sense of taste. This has been accomplished by attaching electrodes to the tongue and stimulating various taste sensations, but it is an inelegant solution, unless you are hellbent on literally drinking the blood of your enemies in battle it's probably okay if this technology takes a little longer to develop than the others though these technologies to make vr more immersive already exist well good luck actually using them an omnidirectional treadmill currently costs two thousand dollars and the tesla suit is 20 grand <laughs> they're not even available for sale yet look these things are unaffordable right now but these should be available at more attractive price points in the near future at which point the technology will have dramatically improved as well wrap up VR continues to improve at an impressive pace, now with the ability to tie all of our senses and motions into the equation, even if it is really expensive. A full dive VR headset will probably never be possible, but that's okay. Opting into dangerous surgery so you could paralyze your body at will to enter a virtual world doesn't necessarily sound too appealing. That's before even addressing any of the other safety or privacy concerns of willingly let a corporation implant a chip into your brain. Luckily, even without that, holodecks remain a very a real possibility and one we could potentially see by the end of our lives though we'll probably only be able to see and not touch them should science ever figure out how to make fully tactile holograms we'd likely offer our condolences to all future holodeck janitors of the world and then you dare try and pretend that's not what you'd use a holodeck for you sick bastards <laughs> thanks for watching